Graffiti. We've all seen it. Someone's tag on the back of a building, a sticker covering a street sign, a small message scribbled in marker on a pole. Graffiti dates all the way back to ancient civilization. From LA to Chicago to New York City, graffiti can be found just about everywhere. However, it is illegal in all 50 states, punishable by up to $10,000 in fines and even multiple years in jail, depending on state laws. In DC, the graffiti scene has decreased with the implementation of programs like Murals DC, which commissions artists to paint murals on buildings around the DMV area. Some would say that a mural is considered art, while graffiti is not. So what is it about graffiti that makes it so difficult for the average eye to appreciate? In my research, I chose to explore the affordances of graffiti and its presence in the alleyways and streets of DC. With DC's rapid rate of gentrification in mind, I wanted to see what's so ugly about graffiti in a city where murals are praised and appreciated. Of course, I had to begin by getting out to see some graffiti myself. On a few separate visits to Shaw, I collected a series of photos that depict graffiti in the area. Initially, I wanted my final symposium presentation to be a photo gallery of the series, but instead I've decided to explain a few of the photos in relation to my research findings in this video. By reading numerous scholarly sources about murals and graffiti, I was able to pull one overbearing theme of the pieces. Murals have become popular as a form of graffiti deterrence. I think the interesting thing about this is the way that murals and graffiti differ, the audience they're created for. For example, take a look at this side door of a building in Shaw. I took this photo in the alleyway where this wall resides. The artwork on this door may not make much sense to you. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't make much sense to me either. However, the point I wish to make is that it's not supposed to make sense to us. We are outsiders looking in. A native DC resident may be able to recognize some or all of these tags. Same with this photo of a corner behind an apartment complex. We don't understand what skimp could mean. Or this photo of a dumpster in a back alley. It probably doesn't make much sense. It doesn't to me at least. However, I think it's important to remember that just because we don't understand something, we can't assume it has no meaning. DC Councilmember Brandon Todd says, Graffiti can have potential to breed crime. It's unsightly. It doesn't make people feel welcome or safe in their community. So what people is he talking about? I imagine he means new DC residents, the upper middle class white members of the gentry who move into neighborhoods like Shaw, where the native residents are constantly being pushed out by the gentrification process. Maybe the graffiti done by these native Shaw residents does make the gentry feel a certain way. It doesn't make people feel welcome or safe, but is it really their community? Murals contribute to an aesthetic. Of course members of the gentry are more partial to murals. Murals make sense because they're created to benefit the gentry, or the outsider. This ties into Glissant's theory of opacity. Members of the native group, Shaw residents, have opacity when it comes to graffiti. There's no way for an onlooker to understand many forms of this art. Eric B., a local graffiti artist, says, It's a way for the disenfranchised, the, the disempowered, to, to kind of feel like you have a voice. You know, I was here, I existed, you know. But there can still be an appreciation for graffiti as an outsider. For example, viewing graffiti for its originality. Graffiti is a conversation. Sometimes used by gangs or groups of people, or sometimes among artists, it's easy to recognize that works of graffiti in certain places interact with one another. Often, artists will use arrows to point to other artists' work on a surface. They'll cross things out or respond in writing. I came to the conclusion that with Stefano Bloch's theory of the slow death of murals, graffiti that's done atop a professional mural is a rebellion and rejection of the mainstream art scene. Corey Stowers, a DC graffiti artist, in a video for Washington Post says, It's kind of like, uh, you know, a thumb in the eye to the gentrification that's been happening in the area over the last 15 years. And the history that was there, the stories that was there, the art that was created there, a lot of that stuff is gone now. Earlier in the semester, I was in contact with Stowers to organize an interview, but circumstances arose and he wasn't able to respond to the questions I'd asked. If I could continue this research, I would definitely consider discovering how graffiti plays into actual crime rates in an area as well as the historical impact of graffiti in urban neighborhoods. So, in the future, as you walk the streets of DC or your local city, take a look around. Do you see the beauty in this art that is often forgotten? Thank you.